Hey, today we're going to make a video synthesizer in Python. That works with our guitar. It's going to detect every note we play and draw a circle on a screen every time it detects a new note. So let's get started. Hey, so in order to be able to do today's project, you're going to need a guitar. And then I use a guitar splitter cable. So this goes right into the back of my guitar. And then I end up with two outputs. So one of these goes into my computer. Uh, for today, I'm going to use a Rocksmith USB cable. And then the other one goes into my amp. And so that way I can play my guitar and have all the effects coming out of my amp while at the same time I can send in a signal to the computer to be analyzed. So let's look at the architecture for this program. The first thing we're going to do once we've got our guitar plugged into our computer is start up this video synthesizer program. So now Python is a little bit slow in dealing with anything like real-time audio processing. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use two different threads. So this using threads is kind of a more advanced topic for programmers because it means that you're running two programs at the same time basically. So one of our threads is only going to take in audio and process that audio. So we'll use a library called Audio in order to analyze our audio and look for something called onset detection. Now, onset detection can be used for a few different things. In our case, we're going to use it to try and detect when our guitar is playing a new note. Once we detect a new note, we're going to, from our thread, add an onset onto what's called a cue. So the cue is basically a piece of data that can be accessed from multiple threads. So one of the problems with threads is that if you have two programs running at the same time and you try to write to the same variable, each one can overwrite what the other one was working on. So in order to keep that straight, we're going to use what's called a queue here. And so you'll see in the code when we get to it how a queue works, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. So we have an audio thread. That audio thread is taking in all the raw audio coming from out of our guitar, analyzing it, looking for an onset, and then if it sees an onset, it's throwing it onto a queue. The other thread we have running is our Pygame display thread. So the first thing it's going to do is loop over and over again. And on each loop, it's going to check a, that queue to see if there are any new onsets there. If there is a new onset, it's going to create a new circle for that onset. Regardless of whether or not there's a new onset, every loop it's going to start shrinking the circles so that they start to disappear. Um, once we've shrunk the size, we'll then draw all the circles that we have and then display it. Now, if our circle size gets below one, we'll get rid of the circle entirely. So with this basic architecture, we have a way of generating our very first visual effects analyzing the raw output of our guitar. All right, so before we dive into the code, let's actually take a look at what the finished product looks like. So I've got my guitar and I've got my splitting cables here. I've got it hooked up to my amp. And now let's kind of run through just opening the program first. So the very first thing I'm going to do is Python 3 video synthesizer.py. So that's the name of the program. Let's try running it. So when you run it without any parameters, it's going to say that there's no input device specified. So one of the things that we're going to take in here is the selection of what our audio is coming in from. So in my case, my guitar is hooked up to the Rocksmith USB guitar adapter. So I've got to set that as my interface. And now if we peek into the code here, you can see that I have this dash input as how you select your um, input device. So now we can do Python video synthesizer.py dash input. And then again, the Rocksmith USB cable adapter is seven on my computer right now. On your computer, it'll definitely be different. Um, 
you probably don't have as many audio interfaces as me. So let's try this out. And so right now I'm running it in a windowed mode. If I turn up the volume on my guitar, and then I strum a chord, you'll see that you'll see that the video comes up and it detects that there's a note or detects that there's an onset. Now one thing I want you to note here is that we're just detecting onsets. We're not detecting note duration, uh, what key it's in. We're just detecting when you when you play a new note. So just keep in mind that this is the only effect we're going with. Audio has functions built into it to try and detect the note that you're playing, uh, but we won't go into that here. And we also won't um, try and do any sort of rhythm analysis either. So now that we know basically how to use our program, let's walk through the structure of it and go through each of the pieces of it. So the first thing we do is import Pi Audio. Now Pi Audio is used in order to get all the audio interfaces from your computer. It should work on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So no matter your platform, it should work for you. We also import NumPy as that's going to be how we pass the audio frames into Audio. So Audio is really great um, audio analysis library. It's got a bunch of features. You can detect notes, detect onsets, um, really just analyze and make cool audio stuff happen from it. So then we import Pygame, which of course is how we're going to draw the circles to the screen. Uh, we'll import random because we're going to have each one of those circles have a random color and that's going to be a random choice for that. And then from threading we import the thread. So the thread is what we're going to use to run our onset detection in the background. And then of course when we detect an onset we're going to pass it onto the queue, which we import next, and um, then that Pi game main loop will pick up that onset from the queue and then add a new circle. Okay, finally we import argparse, which is how we're going to take in our command line arguments. So the first time you run this, you probably won't know all of your input devices according to Pi Audio. So the first thing we do when this program is run is say, hey, there, there's been no input device specified. And then we print out all of the possible input devices. Uh, each one of these devices has a device number. Um, and we'll use that later um, if somebody passes in that input. It'll be in this args variable as args.input. So next, there's this flag here um, to set this to run in full screen mode. Um, if somebody passes in dash F, this program will run in full screen and that's what I use to actually do the projector where it's on my face with this effect. Otherwise, if they don't pass in that full screen mode, we just do the screen height and screen width of 800 by 800. You can feel free to change that entirely. Alright, so we define two colors here. We define a white and a black again, red, green, blue, all the way up to 255 is pure white, and then all the way down to zero is pure black, according to Pygame's colors. Um, then we define a class, circle. So this circle is going to have an X and Y position, a color, and a size. And then it has one method on itself where it shrinks its size. So each time we call, each time we run the loop through in our drawing loop, we'll call a shrink on every circle that we keep track of. So I have a list here called colors, and that's the set of colors that each one of these circles will be. Again, we use a random choice in order to pick which color to use. Next we have circle list, which is where we keep all of the circles we create for each individual onset. Next we initialize Pi Audio. So if we've made it this far, it means that we've been called 
with arguments specifying the proper input device. So we'll initialize a pi audio object and then down here in this open stream we'll open up the stream and set which input and what sample rate we should be. One thing I want you to note here is that I set this buffer size equal to 4096. This might be something you need to play with. With my Rocksmith USB cable I had to up my buffer size from what I thought would be appropriate. So initially I had 1024 here and then 2048. It's got to be some multiple of two um, going in either direction. So if you get a bunch of static coming out of your playback, it might be related to this. So next we set up our Pi Audio format, which is the float 32, number of channels. For my Rocksmith guitar, it's gonna be one audio input. It's gonna be mono. Um, and then we set up the stream. And so the stream opens up according to all these parameters we pass in. Our sample rate, number of channels, our input device, and our buffer size. So after that, we sleep our computer or wait. So that's going to let our buffer catch up and let everything catch up to our system. Next, we set up the parameters for our onset detector. So we set a tolerance, a window size, and a hop size. Each one of these can be tweaked to kind of find a onset detection that you like. If you're playing your guitar and you're not getting enough onsets, you can change this. And if you're playing your guitar and you're getting too many, you can change it and kind of tweak it to fit your, your effect you want to get. Depending on what you're going for, you'll just kind of play with these numbers and it'll either work or it won't. Next, we set up our queue and we set it to the variable queue. So that's going to be where we store those onsets. So the next function we define here is our draw pi game loop. So this is going to be our function that's running over and over throughout the entire program. So we create a variable called running, set it to be true, create a while loop um, while running is true. The first thing we'll do is see if the user has pressed the key. So if they press the key Q, we'll set running to be false so that we can exit at the end of the loop. And then we'll check for the quit event, which is what happens when somebody clicks the little X button to exit your program, and we'll also set running to be false. So next is the big thing where we check the queue. If the queue isn't empty, we'll get whatever onset was put onto the queue, and then we'll create a new circle using a random integer from zero to the screen width, from zero to the screen height, and then one of those random colors that we have in that color set. Finally, we'll set a circle size of 700 pixels and then append that new circle to our circle list. We'll fill the screen with black because we're drawing a new screen for every loop. And then for each one of those circles in our circle list, we'll shrink the circle and draw the circle. Now, if the circle size gets below one, we'll pop or get rid of that circle. Otherwise, we'll just shrink it and draw it. Next, we flip the display or show the display on the screen, and then we clock dot tick, which sets how long we should wait in between, in between um, screen refreshes. So one thing to notice here on our next line where we look at get onsets, we've got this thread down here where we pass in our get onsets function. This is because get onsets is going to run on its own thread. It's not going to wait for the, the drawing to happen. It's going to continually read from the buffer, from the audio buffer, and then run that onset detection function on it. And if it detects that, detects that onset function, then it's going to put that value onto the queue of true. So we in order to make in order to make this happen, we create a t variable set to the thread, and we're not passing any arguments into that thread. Um, we then set it to a daemon mode and then start it. 
So this this means that that get on set starts looping over and over, but behind or out of the way of the rest of our program. So this get on sets function is happening in the background and it's just popping or pushing uh, this, these true values onto our queue for us. So once we get past this t.start, the program keeps running as far as we're concerned. So then it jumps into that draw pie game loop, continually updates the screen, looks for those queues to be bubbled up from the other thread we started, and then draws those circles accordingly. Finally, when we quit our program by pressing Q or hitting the X button, depending on if we're in full screen mode or not, um, we'll exit from that draw pie game function, come back to the stream, we'll stop the stream, close it, terminate the thread, and exit. So, that's a lot. But that's it, we made it.